Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number seven in our incredible new tutorial series where you're releasing the power of your Raspberry Pi Pico W. I will need you to pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And in this class, we will be using the SunFounder Kepler kit for Raspberry Pi Pico W. Cool thing is it has everything that you will need for this class, including the Pico W. Now, most of you guys probably already have your gear, but if you don't have the kit yet, look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon. You can hop on over there and pick your kit up. And believe me, your life and my life are going to be a whole lot easier if we are working on identical hardware. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today and what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you my home my homework solution to the homework that I gave you let's try this I'm going to show you my solution to the homework assignment that I gave you in lesson number six so first of all let me ask how many of you were successful if you were successful leave a comment down below I am legend double chest bump or if you were not successful leave the comment I folded up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. Okay, but if you fold it up, never fear, because I will be showing you my solution today, and hopefully it will make sense when you watch me do it. Okay, so let's just jump right in there, and let's review what the homework assignment was. The homework assignment was you were to connect three LED to your Raspberry Pi Pico W. You were to connect a green LED, a yellow LED, and a red LED. Not a blue LED, because the blue LED LEDs are just for special occasions. So you were supposed to hook up those three LED <clears throat> to your Raspberry Pi Pico W, and then you were also to hook up a potentiometer. You were to read from the potentiometer, but map your readings from instead of values from like 450 to 65,000 or 55,000 or whatever, you were to map those values so that it reads from zero to 100. So you're going to have to use a little what? You're going to have to use a little bit, bit, bit of math to do that. And then as you're reading the potentiometer, the assignment was that if you were reading between zero and 79 you want the green led on if you're reading between 80 uh, from 80 to 94 you want the yellow led on and then if you're reading 95 to 100 you want the red led on so a little bit of kind of like a warning system like if you're up to 75 percent your green line everything's good uh, if, if you are hit about 80% to 94%, you're kind of yellow lining. And then if you start hitting 95% up, you are red lining. And so this is just kind of like a simple example of something that you might try to do in all types of projects. But we're using LED because we're learning on the LED. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Let me get out of your way. And then let's switch over and let me show you how I actually built the circuit. Let me show you, start by showing you how I built the circuit, okay? And so you can see that I've got the Raspberry Pi Pico W here. I've got my, my potentiometer down here. And then what I've done is from these two connectors, and you guys uh, remember that you've got this little card. And if you get your card out of the kit, if you get your little card here out of the kit, this little, uh, uh, this little uh, pin out card out of the kit that will help you kind of see which pins are which and so I always leave that thing kind of sitting right next to my Pico W to help me see what is what but let's get back over here and let me kind of step through it what I did was I connected uh, first of all this pin is a uh, let's see that pin is a ground pin and so here with the yellow I created 
created a ground rail in the second to the bottom row. And then I created a 3.3 volt rail on the bottom because this is hooked to the 3.3 volt out. This is hooked to ground. And so now I have my rails. Then to come over here to ground my, uh, to ground my potentiometer, I go down to the ground uh, rail with my left leg and I go down to my power rail with my right leg. And then I'm reading off of the center leg. And my center leg is connected to that ADC pin, that analog to digital converter pin. It's physical pin 34 on the Raspberry Pi Pico W or it's GPIO pin 28. So I connect it to physical pin 34 here, <coughs> which then turns out to be GPIO pin 28, if that makes sense. And if you get, again, if you look at this little card, hopefully you can read that off and sort of make sense of that. Okay, now I come in and I have three LEDs that I have hooked up. Each one of the short legs of the LED goes through a 220 ohm resistor. Each one of the short legs of the LED go through a 220 ohm uh, resistor. Ah, you know what I didn't do here? I didn't show. <coughs> And here's something very important, which is to establish that ground rail. And so I need to establish the ground rail. I didn't show it there, but I can do it right here. One, two, three. I come up here and I establish a ground rail. That wire was missing and that wire is kind of important. Okay, so you see the one, two, three pin over if you look at this handy little card, that is a ground. And now I've established my ground rail. Then the short leg of the green resistor goes 220 ohms to the ground rail. The short leg of the yellow LED goes through 220 ohms to the ground rail. And the short, <coughs> short leg of the red LED goes through its 220 ohm <coughs> resistor up to the ground rail. Okay, now as far as the long legs of the LED, on the long leg of the red LED, or I'll start over here, the long leg of the green LED, I come all the way over and I connect it to physical pin five, which is GPIO pin three. And again, if you look at this card, you can sort of see what is what, that I connect to the physical pin, but then when we program, we reference the GPIO pin. Then the long leg of the yellow LED is connected to physical pin 12, which is GPIO pin nine. And then the long leg of the red LED comes over and it connects to physical pin 20, which is GPIO pin 15 on, on this, okay? And so this is an overview of kind of the, the schematic that I connected. And I went ahead and I have that connected up now. And you can see that when I built it, I built it a little bit tighter than I drew it, that I was able to get these LED in here here right or get these uh, current limiting resistors right in with the LED. But when I drew the schematic, I kind of had to put them over here so you could see the schematic a little bit better. But you can see that I kind of packed things in a little bit tighter there. Okay, so now what is the first thing that we want to do? The first thing that we want to be able to do is go in and we want to be able to read from that potentiometer. So let's see if we can go ahead and do that coding because remember we're going to read something like from 430, we're going to be read from something like 430 out to 55,000 or 65,000. And we want to map that onto zero to 100. And so we need to just go in and make those measurements and then we'll have to do a little bit of math. So let's come over here and see if you can get my Thonny view. I believe that you can see that most nicely. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say from machine, we're going to import pin because we'll later want to be doing the LEDs. So we might as well import the pin and then the ADC, the analog to digital converter. We also want to put a few little delays in here. So we're going to say from <clears throat> time import sleep. Okay. Now our pot pin, our pot pin, pin, if we go back and look at our drawing here, our potentiometer pin was over here and it was connected to physical pin 34, which is GPIO pin 28. So we're going to say 
pot pin is going to be equal to 28, like is going to be equal to 28, like that, okay? Now we need to go ahead and set up the pot pin. So I'm going to say my pot for my potentiometer. That's my object is going to be the ADC method. And then that's going to be connected to what? <clears throat> pot pin. So that turns on our A to D converter and creates an object my pot that we interact with. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Okay, we're getting really close here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a while loop. So I'm going to say while true. <clears throat> what is true, true, true is always true. So whatever is indented or tabbed over underneath this, this is going to be in the uh, this is going to be in the while loop. And guys, you do this with tabs. So this would be like one tab. You don't do it like with spaces because then they don't line up. It is return. <coughs> It's already tabbed over for me, but if it didn't, then I would just hit the tab to tab over. Now I'm going to read value, <coughs> and value is going to be equal to my pot, the object, and then I'm going to read that object using U16, which I'm going to be reading a 16-bit number, and then I'm just going to print value that I just read, and then I'm just going to put a sleep, let's just put a sleep of 0.1, something like that. Now, if I am thinking right, when we run this thing now, we should be able to see, when we run this thing, we should be able to see what its range of values are. So I need everyone to hold their breath. Ah, invalid syntax, while true, what is, ah, little w, not big w, hopefully you guys caught that. Real problem is one of you didn't hold your breath. So I need everyone to hold their breath this time. Ah, no, no module name machine. What is that? Ah, I see. I see what I did. Uh, down here in the lower corner, I was not set on connected to the, uh, <coughs> I wasn't actually connected to the uh, Pico W. So hold your breath. Okay, it is actually reading now. So you can see these values that it's reading. Let me see if I can come over here where you can see the numbers and you can see the potentiometer at the same time. So I'm going to go all the way to the left. And you guys don't force it. Once it stops on the left, don't try to push it any further than that. So I'm going to say the lowest value that I can see is 4. 32. Now let's switch it all the way the other way and let's see the maximum value. <clears throat> and the maximum value is 65,535. Okay, so what is our task now? What is our task <coughs> in math? We have values from 432 to 65,535, but I want to change those into more useful numbers. So all the way to the left, I want it to be zero. All the way to the right, I want it to be 100. And so in order to do that, we're going to have to come in and we are going to have to do a little bit of math. And so let's see if I can give me just a second here to get this, uh, to get this set up. Okay, I think we are just about ready there. All right, yep, there's our sketch pad. So we're ready to jump in and do a little bit of math. Now, what we are going to need to do is we are going to need to, we are going to need to uh, get my sketch pad clear here. Okay, so now we're going to need to come in and we're going to need to do our math. Well, the first thing that we will need to do is we are going to need to set up our two points. Now, let's think, what did we say when we were all the way to the left? What were we reading? We were reading 432, but we don't want it to be 432. We want to turn that into zero. Okay, and then on the all the way to the right side, we were reading 65,535, but we don't want that to read that. We want to tr change that to 100. And so now we have two points, right? And between two points, we can write the equation of a line. We can see that this is x1, comma, y1, and this is our second point. So this would be x2, 
comma, y2, just to remember how we're going to do a line. Okay, now what is the slope of a line? The slope of a line m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, being mindful to use your parentheses. Okay, now what is y2? y2 is 100. What is y1? It's 0, so 100 minus 0 divided by x2, which is 65,535 minus y1, which is 432, mindful of parentheses, and then that is 100 divided by 65,000, and then 5 minus 4 is 1, 3 minus 3 is 0, and 5 minus 2 is 3. So that's 65,103, and that, my friend, is the slope. Well, now, how do we get the equation of a line? We, we, we're going to use the point-slope formula. So that is y minus y1 is equal to m onto x minus x1. So we have a lot of these things. We have y minus what is y1? 0 is equal to m, which is 100 divided by 65,103. And then times, use your parentheses, be mindful of your parentheses, x minus x1. And what is x1? It is 432. Okay, now y minus 0 just becomes y, and that is going to be equal to 100 over 65103 times x. And now remember, we've got to distribute this, right? We've got to distribute that, so you know how that works. And so it's going to be minus what? 100 times the 432 <clears throat> divided by the 65103. And so that is our equation. So when we read an x value like 432, it's going to turn it into a y value like 0. Okay, now let's put this in terms of the variables that we're actually going to be using. And so what I'm going to be reading from the, from the potentiometer, I am going to be reading pot val. And so pot val is going to be x. And then I'm going to change it into my val, which is going to be y. Okay, so now what does this become? My val, which is going to be that value between 0 and 100 is going to be 100 divided by 65103 times what? Times what I read, which was pot val, okay, which was pot val, and then minus the 100 times 432, use your parentheses, can you see that? No, you can't. 100 times 432 divided by 65,103. Okay, and this is the equation that we are going to put in so that as I read pot value, those really strange numbers, I turn them into my value, which are really good numbers. Guys, this is very important. Don't skip this part. If you don't know how to do this, just keep watching me and keep doing it along with me, and then you'll learn how to start solving this type of problem on your own. But this math that I'm showing you here is probably the most important part of the lesson. Okay, so this is going to be what we program in when we go in and start doing our program, okay? And so you need to kind of write that down. You need to write that down. So now let me come back over and let's see if we can start coding this thing up. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to go ahead and I'm going to need to set up those LEDs. So you can see that I set up my pot pin, but now I need to set up my LED pins. And so I'm going to say my green 
is, uh, or I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to set up the pin numbers to begin with. And so pot pin was 28. Green LED, like I said earlier, my green LED is connected to physical pin 5, which is GPIO pin 3. Again, look at your, look at your little card here. I'm going to go a little bit not so munchkin on you here. So the green LED is GPIO pin 3. And then the yellow LED is going to be equal to the yellow LED. And I just saw we have a, hold on, hold on. We've got a beautiful view, a beautiful view of a fisherman there. Look at that. Wow. I get distracted easily. Let's see. Let's see if we can zoom in on him. Okay. You know what those guys are doing? They're catching the little silver fish or the minnows. And so they're catching their bait in those baskets. Isn't that amazing? But I digress. Let's get back. Let's get back to our coding. Okay. Sorry. Okay. <clears throat> so my green LED was uh, three, GPIO pin three. My yellow LED is GPIO pin nine. And then my red LED is GPIO 15. Now, <clears throat> just like I came in and I set my pot pin up, just like I set my pot pin up, I need to set these pins up as well. And so I'm just going to say my green, which will be the object, that is going to be pin, and which pin? The green LED pin is going to be an output, so pin dot out. So what I'm making is I'm making an object, my green, that I can interact with, and it is connected to green LED, which is pin 3, and that is going to be an output. And then let's see, I'm going to go ahead now, and I'm going to say my yellow, my yellow is equal to pin, and then it's going to be yellow LED, and then it is going to be pin dot out, as we said earlier, <clears throat> and we better spell yellow, <coughs> we better spell yellow right. <coughs> Again, I'm sorry for clearing my throat. I am getting over malaria and pneumonia, and so I do have a little remnant uh, throat clearing that's necessary. I'm actually feeling great. It's just when I talk a little bit, I get a little, a little bit of needing to clear my throat. Now we're going to do my red, and that is going to be equal to pin, and that's going to be red LED comma pin dot out. So I've set all those things up, and you know what I want to do first of all, just to kind of make sure, just to make sure that this thing is working. I'm just going to go ahead and see if I can turn them on. So I'm going to say my green dot <clears throat> value. I'm going to set it to one. I'm going to say my yellow dot value. I'm going to set it to one. And then I'm going to say my red dot value. <coughs> I'm going to set that to one. Okay. Now, why do I want to do that? I want to do that just to make sure I have my pins right. I have my circuit right, that everything is talking to the LED. And so let's come over here and then let's see, I think I've already got the program running, so I'm going to stop the program. And then let's just see if we run it, we get uh, my yellow isn't defined. And so I've got an error there. What is that? My yellow. That sure looks right. Ah, uppercase M, sorry. M, lowercase. Hopefully you guys caught that. Let's try it again. Okay. Giddy up. Look at that. All three LEDs turned on. And so what does that mean? That means that my pins are right. My setup is right. Everything is good. Let's just come in and just verify that we can turn them off. So I'll say zero, zero, zero. I'll stop and I'll run and uh, I'll stop and I will run and then boom, we turned them off. Okay, so that is very, very good. So now we know that we're talking to our LEDs, and so that's good. Let me come over here. Let me take those out because we don't want to just talk to them for no reason at all. And what I'm going to do now is you can see that we are already 
reading value. And I think what we said was in our uh, in our math, we had called the value we read from the potentiometer, we'd call it pot val. So we'll say pot val is equal to my pot dot read. Now, what is it that we want to do? We want to turn pot val into my val because pot val reads something like 400 to 65,000 and we want to change that into my val which will go from 0 to 100. So let's see if that's going to work. We'll come in here and now what I'm going to say is I'm looking at my notes that we just did. My val is equal to be mindful of your parentheses 100 divided by 65,103 Okay, times what? Times what we read, which was pot val. And then we need to subtract, <clears throat> be mindful of your parentheses, 100 times 432 divided by 65103, like that. And now, instead of getting a value from 400 to 65,000, we should be getting a number from 0 to 1, if 100, if we did the math right. And then now, <clears throat> what I'm going to want to do is instead of printing value, I want to print what I just calculated, my val. And so now let's see if we've got that math part working right. So we're going to run it. And look at that. All the way to the right, it is reading 100. Okay, all the way to the right, it's reading 100. And then if I kind of take it up to about straight up and down, if I get it about straight up and down, it's reading 50. And then if I bring it all the way to the left, all the way to the left, I am reading zero. Giddy up. Who's your friend? Math is your friend. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm, now I'm taking crazy numbers and I'm generating useful numbers. Now what do I need to do? I need to put my if statements in. Okay. I need to put my if statements in. And so let's come back over here to a nicer code view. And I'm going to stop the program just so that it doesn't annoy me. And now what did we say? We said if the value is, is less than 80, if it's 0 to 79, if it's less than 80, we want the green LED to come on, okay? And so what I'm going to say is if, if my val, if my val is less than 80, then what do I want to do? Well, I want my green dot value <coughs> to be 1. But now what do we have to remember? We got to remember that last time it might have been somewhere else and there might be other LEDs on, LEDs on that shouldn't be on right now. And so I need to set those to zero just to make sure if they were on, they'll go off now. So my yellow dot value is going to be zero. And then my red dot value is going to be zero. Okay. Now, that should be, if I'm less than 80, what should happen? The green LED should be on. But now if add val, you, I mean, if, did I say my val? Okay, yeah, that's good. So if my val now is greater than or equal to 80, right? If it's less than 80, it's going to be green. But once it hits 80, it's going to be yellow. So that's what I'm talking about, about paying attention to those boundaries. So if my val is greater than or equal to 80, then what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to snag this code here because it's going to be very similar. And I'm going to come here and see if I can paste that code. And now what I'm going to do is I want the green to be off and I want the yellow to be on, and I want the red to be off. And then finally, what is the third condition that we could look at if my val, and what did we say? Let me look at my little notes here. We said that once you hit, once you hit 95, you want to go red. So if my val is greater than or equal to 95, if my val is greater than or equal to 95, then what we're going to do is we want the red one to be on, okay? And so we will come here, we will paste, and this time green will be off, yellow will be off, and red will be on, 
like that. Okay, and then we still have our little sleep up here, so it's not going to be running too quickly. This is pretty exciting. Could it really be that easy? I ask you, could it really be that easy? Well, let's see. <clears throat> let's come back over here to this most excellent view where you can kind of see all the action going on. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to need you to hold your breath. Ah, giddy up. Okay, so it is under, it is under 80. And so what LED is on? The green one. Okay, so now let's turn this up and let's see when we get to 80% what happens. Okay, when we get to 80%, what happens? Right there. 79 is green. Tweak it a little bit. Tweak it a little bit. The program's working right, it's just hitting exactly 80 is hard. So then once you go past 80, you're getting your warning light, your yellow, you're entering the yellow zone. Okay. And then let's keep going. And we come up to, we come up to, what did we say? 95 and at 95, giddy up. What do we have? We have the red on. And then just to make sure it works, if we go back and forth, it works properly. Okay, guys. I think this is really cool because do you see what we're doing now? We are getting input through a potentiometer. We're getting input from one component. We are doing math and then we are doing things with output components. So we're getting input from input components. We're doing math and then we are sending signals to output components. And that's really what this is all about, right? This is, that's really what this is all about. As we start going to future lessons, we're going to have more and more sophisticated and advanced input devices. We're going to have more sophisticated math, and then we're going to have more complicated output devices. But this is kind of like what the whole thing is about. And I just really hope you understand it. And I hope you understand what we went through on the math. And if you didn't understand the math, go back and do the math again. You know, kind of go back and watch the math part again, because you really, really, really need to understand that math. And as we go through this, we're going to be doing these linear equations over and over and over. Okay. This is your homework assignment for next week. Okay, this is your homework assignment for next week. And you guys that are watching in the premiere, don't give the answer away down in the chat. Don't give the answer away down in the chat, okay? Because I want everyone to think through this. But some of you old pros probably already saw this, and I did it on purpose. But there is a very, very serious logical error in the way that I did this. And if you really step through the code, you're going to see what the mistake is. Now, when you look over here, it really looks like it works, right? It really looks like it works. But there's a little thing that's going on in this code that should not be happening, even though you don't notice it when you watch the device and the circuit operating. But it is, it is the type of logical errors that leads to airplanes crashing and buildings falling over and bridges collapsing because there is a logical thought error in the way that I did this code, even though you don't see it as you're just turning the uh, potentiometer. But I want someone to tell me the thing that's happening here that is not good. Okay, what is the thing that is happening in this code that is not good? And then next week, what I'll show you is I'll show you the proper way to do it. And I'll show you how you really, really have to think about these things because it really is a pretty serious error that we have going on there. Okay, guys, man, I hope you're having as much fun taking these classes as I am making them. I'm hoping that you're starting to get comfortable with the math. Like what is it a couple of times, two, three times already? We've gone through those linear equations. I want you to get really, really comfortable with that. Why? Because math is your friend. And if you guys want to help me out, leave a comment down below. That always helps me with the old YouTube juice. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please subscribe. When you subscribe, make
make sure that you give us a thumbs up. Make sure that you leave the comment. The homework assignment, again, is to tell me the logical error in the code that I just did. And then finally, share this video with other people because the world needs more people doing engineering and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.